We now return to the Transformers. I've loved 3D modeling and 3D printing since I was introduced to them in junior high, and I've loved Transformers even longer. One day I was sitting, bored out of my mind in class, and suddenly it hit me. I would make a 3D printed Transformer. I've never owned my own 3D printer, but I've always been fortunate enough to have access to one through places like schools, libraries, and maker spaces. I've been able to make some pretty cool stuff from 3D models using both 3D printers and CNC mills. However, one thing about 3D printing that had always driven me crazy was the support material on my prints, which could take me hours to remove and clean, and even then leave my model looking dumb. So I decided from the start to make my transformer with no supports and to make it so that it would print in a single piece. Ideas flooded into my head until the end of that class, and I came home with my assignments filled with doodles and sketches for how I could accomplish this. Naturally, my first transformer design was the main man himself, Optimus Prime. And Optimum Prime. <laughs> And he was, at that point, the most complex thing I'd ever designed in CAD software. I was hooked, and from the moment he was finished, I knew I would not be satisfied until I made another, his arch nemesis, Megatron. It was also at this point that I set some design rules for myself, some constraints, if you will, as to what these transformers would be. Firstly, they would have no support material. This means that every individual component has to make contact with the build plate at some point, also, that means that there's going to be a pretty flat side of the model, too. Because there's not support material, I cannot do large horizontal overhangs, but I can get away with some of the little smaller ones. The second important part of these 3D printed transformers would be that they would require no assembly. They would have little to no parts forming. I mean, can you even call yourself a transformer if you do that? Finally, no assembly means that it has to be statically stable in both modes by gravity, because the joints, which are 3D printed, wouldn't have great friction. With these constraints in mind, I finished Megatron, and it was clear that I was getting better at this. Where Optimus Prime had taken me three revisions to get it right, I got Megatron right my first try, and I even tried some new things in his design, like ball joints, which I had never done before. After this, I took a two-year break and spent some time in Brazil, but when I came back, I was ready for more, and I decided to make a transforming Volkswagen bus, or combi, as they call them down in Brazil, in honor of the time I'd spent there. I'd absentmindedly worked out how his design would work during the aforementioned two years, so making him was mostly just an exercise of refamiliarizing myself with my CAD software. I also intended for his design to be somewhat of a template for future projects and remixes. I was pretty psyched with how Combitron turned out, so I decided to revisit an old design I'd come up with for Megatron before abandoning it, just to tie up loose ends. With a Decepticon tank, I'd now created four Transformers. By this point, I'd accumulated a number of ideas for future projects, so I decided to pick one that would push me even more and be different from anything I'd done before. By this point, I also decided to make a video showing the progress of making one of these Transformers, just for fun. The first step in making a 3D printed transformer is picking which one I want to design. I often pick a design based on how cool I think the character is, and whether or not I already have some ideas for how I can make it work. This gives me a base and motivation to work from. In this case I picked Windblade, because I honestly think she's a cool character and has a cool alt mode design. I wanted to try something different and make a jet, but I'd been having some idea block with Starscream. Your knowledge is only overshadowed by your stupidity, Starscream. Don't shoot! And I also wanted to see if I could make a more slender Transformer, in this case, a female Transformer. Female. Because up to this point, all my Transformers had been rather robust and bulky, pretty chunky guys. The second step for me in making one of these transformers is to collect reference material for my design. This depends a lot on how familiar I am with the design. For example, Optimus only needed reference material at the very end when I started adding finer details. Sometimes this reference material can also help me decide on a scale for the figure. Collecting reference material for Windblade was interesting because as a female character, she is subject to the nature of the internet, which unfortunately gives pretty much every female character in existence over-endowed features when compared to the primary source material, and that kind of a design was not my objective for this project. She's not so hot! She's hot enough to replace you whenever I choose! 
Having collected enough reference material, I then proceeded to part 3 in my design process, making some initial design sketches. In this, I often use Optimus to scale my transformers, where a majority should be smaller than him. Megatron should be, and is, about equal in stature, if not slightly larger. Also, because I don't own my own printer, I struggle to remember the build volume and bed dimensions of the printers I do use, so it's easier to use another transformer for a frame of reference. Sketching out a design helps me visualize in my head the extrusions and sketches I will have to make in the CAD software, and throughout the rest of the design phase I will continue to make more sketches as needed as I go along. Once I have a good idea about what I'm going to model in CAD for my sketches, I can proceed to step 4, which is taking my idea from a 2-dimensional to a 3-dimensional space and model it in 3D. I initially modeled components that I called the skeleton, because I was going to use them as a test but then I ended up just using them anyways. But all my parts are still labeled skeleton because of that. I then moved on to the feet and ankle joints, which I plan to be a similar concept but still a different joint because it locks horizontally and not vertically. Overall, the joints were the biggest challenge of the model because there were often more of them and joints that I had never done before in the shoulders, hips, knees, ankles, and landing gear. After I'd figured out the legs for the most part, I moved on to the torso, starting with a base to help me set scale, and then working on the complex curves involved in both the torso region and the cockpit portion. A somewhat late addition was the landing gear for jet mode, and I was particularly concerned with the compliant mechanism that would lock it in the opened and closed positions. As a final touch, katanas that store as wingtip blasters in the jet mode. A quick check in the slicer, and it was ready for printing. The first prototype was good. The hips, knees, shoulders, and cockpit worked. Even the landing gear worked, though it was a bit short. This was the first time I'd seen the completed jet mode, and I couldn't have been happier with it. But there were some things to fix. For starters, the ankle locks didn't work, and it couldn't stand on its feet. You disgust me! There were also some improvements to be made with the shape of the arms, with some joint tolerances, and with the fit of the swords in both their sheaths and in Windblade's hands. So I made some quick revisions, including completely remodeling the arm, and sent it back off to the printer. I'm super happy with the way Windblade turned out. I think she's pretty faithful in both jet and robot modes, and although her transformation is pretty simple, she still helped me push back the horizon on my abilities and grow in many ways. Looking to the future, I've been asked a few times to do the fan favorite characters of Starscream and Bumblebee, and I have a few other ideas to work on as well. I'm a full-time student, and my time to work on these things is pretty limited, so it probably will be a little while before I can finish another one of these, but I hope to do as many as possible, and amass myself a small army of these guys. Feel free to download the files for any of these transformers on Thingiverse, and make one for yourself. I'm lazy and stupid at painting. You are even lying! Oh, you're stupid! I'm stupid! I'm stupid! So don't expect me to paint any of them, but feel free to paint one for yourself. I'm sure it would look amazing, and I'd love to see it.
return after these messages.